Welcome back to Stylized Station, a platform dedicated to teaching beginners how to create game art. If you're a beginner or intermediate artist looking to learn how to create stylized 3D environments, you've come to the right place. Today, we are going to learn how to create a stylized environment in Unreal Engine. We will cover concepting, stylized modeling techniques, creating stylized grass foliage in Unreal Engine, and some stylized texturing. Speaking of texturing, if you want to learn how to master stylized texturing using Substance Painter, feel free to join our latest course, where you'll learn how to create beautiful stylized textures from scratch, including anime and Studio Ghibli style textures. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into the video. Hi guys! My name is Maurizio Marcantoni and I'm a lead finishing artist in Rainbow CGI in Italy. I currently work on various TV series such as Disney Puppy Dog Pals and 44 Cats. Today I want to share some of my knowledge through the breakdown of one of my latest projects called Dreamy House. First of all, I would like to thank you Sarah Station to give me this great opportunity. And in this video I will talk about my creative process that can help you understand my workflow and the mindset that I always use to achieve a new project successfully. I'm going to divide the video in different sections so you can reach the part that you need more easily. Don't forget also to follow me on my ArtStation page. So when I start a new project, the first thing I think about is whether I like the subject or the chosen reference. Procrastinating in our industry is something that happens often, and if you don't find anything interesting in what you do, it's very easy to drop the project itself, right after starting it. So when you are trying to start a new challenge, it is important that the subject you choose is interesting and that it gives you the right thrust to finish it. As you know, in our work, it is important to always be up to date with the latest software or the latest workflow. This reason could help us through the production of a new project to learn new programs and new skills. In this case, I took the advantage to learn how to use the Unreal Engine 4. I have always used a non real time rendering like V-Ray, but with this project helped me to develop new techniques different from the usual one. One topic that always interested me was the, the environments. An amp that is able to immerse you totally in the scene. And I felt that maybe I can achieve this effect more directly through a small animation rather than a single static image. So I decided to implement this new workflow. So I started blocking out the first shapes on Maya. Blocking is really one of the most important thing to start with. Usually starting to model all the details right away leads you nowhere. Start from blocking to get a precise idea of the proportion and volume of the scene. Sometimes for my env I use a dummy for proportion. Every dummy you can download it everywhere. I like to work with the, the active wireframe to always keep an eye on the number of the polygon. A very important piece of advice I would like to give you concerns the randomness of the mesh and the variety. Above all, in um, a more advanced state of work, it will be more important to keep the feeling of randomness in order not to make the environment too flat. For an environment artist, it is essential to give randomness and variety to everything around us, because nothing in the world is perfect, geometrically speaking. Another piece of advice I would like to give you is the importance of being precise and clean in modeling. Working over the years, I realized the importance of giving the right namespace to each file before modeling it. This will allow me not to find myself with a lot of files to rename, not a lot of assets. 
Uh, the same thing is for the UV. For example, I've uh, I got a, a lot of tiles to the model. So first I model one tile, do the UVs and then duplicate it. So after I need only to lay out the UVs without wasting a lot of time. A tool that I often use during the modeling phase is the lattice at the end of the scene to give uh, that cartoony sense. Always to break the randomness and variety that will have made it seems too monotonous. So I combine all the elements of the of the model all together and I apply a lattice to deform the entire modeling uh, the, the entire model a little bit. Once the geometry is blocked out, I can start defining the main details of the elements. I try to leave as few sharp angles as possible in low poly modeling. This will then allow me to have more big control with the eye poly. In stylized modeling, curved shapes are very often used to give more sense of smoothness to the scene so that the result will be more harmonic. The shapes are almost never defined as for example in a hard surface modeling, so we tend to use very often tools that deform geometry such as lattice that I mentioned before. Also the bend tool is very important which you can always find under the deform tab in Maya. Uh, it is a very useful tool to the cause, a very simple tool, but very useful. As for the modeling of the tiles, I prefer to take more time and model them one by one, and of course duplicate some, in order to then modify them one by one to create the variety I was talking about before in the scene. So at the end of this stage, I usually took different sections of the model, exported in ZBrush and add some detail, for example, carved wood planks uh, or add some uh, cracks for stones and something like that. So for this project, I decided to add details directly on the texture and I decided only to do rocks on ZBrush. So I split the model in Maya and then I export it in FBX. So for texturing my model, I use Substance Painter. Very important in this stage is to use the Aces LUT color. You can find it on ArtStation if you search it. So this LUT allows to have the same result in viewport from Substance Painter to Unreal. Many of you will have happened to texturize an assets on Substance, export the textures and once loaded on Unreal, they all seem washed out. Thanks to this color loot, you will be able to solve the problem. Because what you see on Substance Painter will be the same result on the Unreal for viewport. So mostly I use the same method for every mesh in the house just making all these small changes depending on the element, be it wood or metal or fabric or any other material. Uh, pay attention to never forget to bake the model before you start to texture the assets. So I stay pretty basic with texturing. I create a fill layer as my base color. I remove the normal and add information just set the roughness, the roughness value, depends on the type of assets that we are texturing, and select the color. After that, I duplicate the layer to include some edges on my model. Add a white mask to each layer, and then click on the generator to apply the mask editor. Just remember to use a darker color than the base. In this section, I'm going to tweak some of the mask editor setting, such the global contrast. It's going to set something like 0 0.22. The curvature, set it around 1. Then on the mask editor, apply a sharpen filter and then increase its value. 
after the levels and invert it. Once you invert it, you can some you, you can see some ladder edges on the model. So after that, you can add different uh, type of uh, workflow. So the goal is always to build up the the texture step by step, like the modeling phase. Never overdo it. Just trying to play also with the blending mode of the mask editor to give better result. I think that the mask editor in Substance Painter is one of the most powerful tools of Substance. So after I made the, the texture for the part of my house, I exported the texture with the Unreal 4 packed template and let's jump on Unreal. So, first of all, uh, it's important to decide the position of the model and its location. It is also important to choose the focal length uh, and the position of the camera. So I looked uh, at the concept that I choose and I, I choose the, the position of, of the camera. As animation teaches, never care of the element that you don't see, so this save time and geometry. Uh, so I place the, the house in a certain way where you can't see the, the back part of the model, where there, there's no... Uh, foliage and landscape, I usually use two types of workflow. The first one is to use a texture of uh, grass with the alpha channel. You can find it on Google if you're looking for it. And um, you can also create it or paint it. Paint it would be better because you, you have the more stylized uh, effect on it. So you can, if you don't have, you can create it on, uh, on Photoshop just using the magic wand and then apply the texture on a material in Unreal and then use a mask on it. For the modeling side I use really simple planes with some geometry because otherwise you're going to have problem with the simple grass node in Unreal uh, because more geometry is better for the movement, for the grass wind movement. Uh, the second one is to model different types of foliage in Maya very low poly, just to create a little different templates and then use the linear gradients to texture it. For example, you can use the linear gradient with the minus X node just to invert the mask and control better the foliage movement. Because on the roots, the movement has to be very limited, uh, differently from the tip of the foliage. In this case, uh, uh, I use a mixture of these two workflow, especially on the north side of Unreal. I purchased on Unreal a lovely demo project that I like to study. Uh, that I like, of course, to study the node network. And after that, I make some tweaks to make it useful to my needs. You can also find a lot of incredible grass tutorial on Satellite Station. Play this on YouTube. So just be creative and get inspired by it. So the final stage concerned the camera movement. I didn't want to make a fast camera movement. So this way the viewer would have time to enjoy every detail of the scene. So I add a little camera movement just to feel the air that I was talking about. As a final step, I rendered the whole project on Unreal via the movie render queue. Uh, the setting I exported the project was uh, uh, in AXR. Then I added the anti-aliasing with values of 16. And that's all. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any question, do not hesitate to contact me on social media and on or on ArtStation. So, bye!